Hello and welcome to my YouTube channel. Regular viewers will know by now I review many photographic audio and video related products. Well today we're taking a look at a Panasonic lens and it is the Panasonic 25mm lens for the Micro Four Thirds uh, system and here it is fitted to my Panasonic G9. Let me take the lens hood off. Now it is, although it's actually a 25mm on a Micro Four Thirds body, the end result simulates really a 50mm lens that you would have on a full frame. So in effect it's a nifty 50 and it's a really nice lens. Yeah it's a really nice and it's really cheap. I mean um, I got it here in the UK uh, 138 quid on Amazon so you know it's not an expensive lens but it's actually a really good quality lens. Um, now there it is fitted to me uh, G9 it hasn't got image stabilization, not that I can see anyway. It's not, it's not printed on the lens anywhere. Um, so it's advisable to fit it on a body which has got image stabilization, of which most micro four thirds bodies do. Um, on my G9, it's got five axis in body image stabilization. Um, but for, as a nifty 50, it's a great, um, it's a great all rounder. So you can use it for portraits. I probably wouldn't in all honesty, I'd probably use an 85mm lens, uh, it's just got that little bit more creamy bokeh. It goes down to f1.7, so because uh, it goes wider, A it's good in low light because obviously you've got the wider aperture, but B it's good for getting that creamy bokeh. Uh, quite a nicely made lens, in fact it's a very nice, what am I saying, quite, it is actually a very nicely made lens. Um, oh, let me turn the body off, that's not a wise thing to do. Um, you can see there it is really tiny it's uh um I, that is one massive advantage with micro four thirds the lenses are much smaller so when you're carrying kit around you know you've got a really nice lens like that which is really really compact when you look at this one this is the olympus uh, 12 to 100 i've already done a review on the 12 to 100 pro lens um, and that's an f2.8 aperture, constant f2.8. But that goes right from 24 to 200. Look how compact that is. Um, obviously, it's a lot heavier than this one. Um, but, you know, that's a, that's a terribly nice lens. But, uh, yeah, so that's, the, that's the, uh, the actual lens. Really, really compact. I think that's a plastic mount. Might be metal, can't tell. It's now there's a plastic mount on the um, uh, back, um, made to look like a metal mount. But uh, as long as you're careful with it, it'll last, you know, it's not going to um, get damaged. The weight of it is virtually nothing. I should weigh it so we can see. I haven't weighed it yet, so let's give it a weight. Let's have a look on the scales. Yeah, 128 grams it weighs uh, on the scales. So 128 grams, that's, you know, hardly anything really, isn't it, in the overall scheme of things. Uh, that uh, You throw that in your camera bag and not know it's there. So that's the actual uh, lens itself. Now, the actual image quality is great. I'm very, very pleased with the image quality. Now, um, look at this image. Okay, so he isn't, you know, pretty, but look at the out of focus area. It's lovely, you know, it renders the outer focus beautifully. That's a very nice, pleasant um, outer focus area. So if you are doing portraits, now I am sat quite close to me brother there. In fact, I'm sat very close. Just, um, you know, we're having a cup of tea in Debenhams. And, um, you know, it, it, it's fine. It's just rendered the background beautifully because I, I am quite close. Um, obviously, with a full frame body, you would get a, um, a quite a different uh, result to that, but um, I mean that's worked out well. The uh, sharpness is excellent. I don't know how well YouTube is going to render that, but the sharpness on his eyelashes, even looking through glasses, is absolutely first class. So um, you you certainly won't have any issues with uh, sharpness with this lens. Again, you know sharpness, colours, contrast. I've done that as this panorama, just cropped at. Um, you 
expensive, a brickwork there. Nothing wrong with that. Nobody would be disappointed with that, even if you were using this commercially. Yeah, very pleased with that. Again, look at the brick, look at the brick work on there. Plenty of detail there. And there is, you know, quite a reasonable amount of dynamic range with Micro Four Thirds, particularly with the G9. I'm, you know, very pleased with that. Um, yeah, so, I mean, I have learned that Micro Four Thirds can produce the results. I think you've got to really know what you're doing. Um, as you do with all photography, whether you're using full frame or whether you're using APS-C, you need to know your camera. You need to know what it can do, its limitations and workarounds, you know. Um, but again, brick work. That sign's been up there for months and months and months. Another new store opening soon. Mm. We haven't seen it yet, though. <laughs> but again, brick work is... It looks good. It looks really good. And what was that? That was shot at... One four hundredth of a second at f one point seven. So at f one point seven, it's not going to be sharp on the edges because it's not meant to be, is it? You know, um, that's where I focused on, and that is pin sharp. So yeah, that was that f two point eight, but one. Yeah, so there we go. That is the Panasonic 25mm, which is effectively a 50mm lens. It goes down to f1.7 um, and a uh, you know very, very light lens. Um, so there we go. Thanks very much for watching. I hope you found that useful. If you did, please hit the subscribe button if you do like uh, these videos and hit the like button if you like this particular video. So thanks very much for watching and stay tuned for more videos relating to video and photography. Thanks very much. Bye for now.